Good morning once again and welcome to PC315, the course on life skills. Can I request one of us to lead us in prayer even before we could begin with our session? Can I request Louis, if you can lead us in prayer? Or Arisen, would you like to lead in prayer? Is it possible that you could pray in the place where you are? Or anyone from the class, anyone like Prabhakar, Mangi. We can just unmute and pray so that we can start the session. Yes, Prabhakar, please come on. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we acknowledge your holy name. At this moment, we come unto your throne of praise. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to learn and grow together, Father. Uh, we are submitting ourselves and each and every member of our class and Pastor uh, as well, Dinah as well, Father, unto your throne of praise. Lead us, Father, guide us so that we can have a wonderful session which will enhance our skills to, to be equipped as a kingdom builders in this earth and to fulfill your wish and your responsibilities given by you. Thank you so much for everything I honor and I declare to give your name over everyone. Thank you so much. I ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhakar, for leading us in prayer. Okay, so we are continuing on people management skill. We are continuing to discuss and study further on this particular topic on people management. Because I feel this is one of the skills that is very important. It is important to our ministry and as well as professional development, which, uh, you know, which will enable us to be a good or a great people manager, uh, despite the sector that each of us are in. So I feel these skills are very vital or very important to be developed in us. So let's discuss further. So why do you think people management skill is important? We are ministry leaders. Yes, we are business people at the same time. We are working in different sectors. Why do you think people management skill is important for us? Anyone from the class, you can unmute and speak, or you can post your answer on the chat. Why do you think people management skill is important? Uh, first up, can I try? Yes, Maggie, go ahead. Uh, I thank you first. Uh, uh, like in other class, uh, you say, you say that uh, our 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 biggest asset is people, and yes. for us to get most of, out of them and for them to do work properly, they have to be managed in a way that is profitable for both sides for for them and also for 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 the church or for business thank, thank you. you thank you thank you man as you said yes people are in a set even if it's a different sector it can be ministry it can be business it can be workplace people are in a set so we need to handle people we need to value people and we need to know how to manage them. Can be ministry, business, or work, any 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 sector you see. We uh, it is made up of people different ages. They come from different backgrounds. 
and each of them had different ideas how to do certain task. This means the different groups within a ministry or within a business, within it can be any sector, will be motivated by different things and will work, it would work best in a particular way. So we need to ensure that everyone on the team reaches a maximum potential. So as a leader or as a people manager, we must build up a toolkit or we need to know how to manage people. What are the skills that we need to develop within us to manage people? despite the sphere that we are ministering to, are working with. So there is a need not only to motivate each other in a team or in a ministry, but we need to improve it. If it is a ministry, we need to improve our ministry. We need to see how we can reach out people in different area, how we can expand our ministry to different places. If it's a workplace, or if it's in a business, we need to see how we can improve our productivity and boost the morale overall of all the staff. And at the same time, we need to be there to offer support and reduce the stress in time of change. So we need to be there to motivate and also see how we can develop the people for us to get a good productivity. So this must all be done, you know, uh, with a good motivation. So holding, uh, having a vision in place, having a bigger vision in place so that and we can also communicate that vision to the team so that all of us in the team, in the ministry, have that big picture in mind for us to understand why we are doing what we are doing. So that is one of the people management skill that we need to develop within ourselves. So as a, as a leader, there are certain skills that we need to develop within us so that we can manage the team, we can manage the ministry and uh, support them and motivate them to perform, develop better. So what are those? I've just listed out nine people management skills which could help us to thrive as a ministry leader or as a manager, as a uh, business owner, whichever sector that we are in, but it will only help us to develop these skills or sharpen the skills which can help us to perform better in our ministry, in our workplace, in our business. So let me share the PowerPoint before we begin with the session. Okay, so all of us are on the same page, we're able to see what I'm seeing. Okay, so first we can discuss about trust. The one of the skill in a manager or a, in a leader, which is very vital. So when I say ministry leader, you can be in any of the aspects like as for Ephesians 4.11, you may be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, ministry leader, whichever area that you are. One of the skill that we need to develop within ourselves is trust. Trust is very important for any relationship. So as a leader, we need to look into this because it is very vital. We need to show the staff. We need to show our members in the, uh, in the ministry that we trust them. This can be displayed in many ways, in many ways on a daily occasion. So one of the source for the staff or for the members in the ministry to get frustrated is with something very small things to manage so with years of experience that we would carry with each of us, we should be able to spot ways of working that could 
improve our efficiency. How? We need to be as an example. Even before we could bring that change into another person, I think we need to put that in ourselves, show it as an example, and then share it. I feel the impact may be more. But constantly watching over the staff, watching over the team, how they perform, we may lose track of the bigger picture that we have. So instead of doing that, we need to trust our team. We need to trust our staff. So how do we do that? By assigning small things to them and trusting them with the job. Even before uh, uh, you could get the job done, when you assign, brief them what is expected. We need to brief them what is expected and also help them how this task will impact the big picture. How this small task will help you achieve the big picture. Because it's not always that the person may understand why you are asking them to do what you're doing. So when the, when the task is assigned and when we explain it and trust them with that, now we are giving the person, we are giving the staff, the employee, certain ownership of their own work. And we only look and they only can reach us for any kind of advice that they need. So in this process, we are making or we are developing that person to be a leader and to be more efficient in decision making and taking the task done. So they will also be able to work without any kind of interference. This not only develops the team or motivates the team, but they grow to be more confident in what they are doing. So we are enabling, we are uh, eventually we are building the leadership scale among the team members. As a leader, one thing we need to remember, not all the tasks that has been assigned and trusted with, you may get a, a, a expected outcome. When your team member fails, don't give up. See how you can encourage them. See what went wrong. We need to analyze. And then see if they need help. Assign the help that is needed and see how better we could do the next time. So even before we could give up, you see what are the different ways that we could handle the task better. See if this is something that is motivating the team. This is helping the team to develop a leadership skill within them. See if the team is growing with this assignment that has been given. So we need to analyze a different aspect to check what is the outcome of this. And, you, and then we can decide. So at the end of the day, what I mean to say is, don't, don't give up. Trust the leaders. Try different ways. See how each one can handle the task because not all are same. But then some takes time, but we can definitely work with them. Second skill here is good communication skill. Communication is something very vital and it is very important for any leader manager. They can be different from being trust or uncertainty within the time of change. So here we see that communication skill is very important for every management task, every ministry task. So great leaders need to be able to present the ideas, their vision, the goal, 
to inspire others, highlight the importance of the task, share the impact what would, would have on a larger scale. And then next, they can discuss the next step with their team to see how, as a team, that they could achieve the task by sharpening the skills so that the staff will have great clarity about the task that each one are assigned to. And also, we need to try to maintain a transparency within the team so that each of us know what we are doing and what is expected out of each of us. So for a leader, this leads a, uh, it needs a great efficiency. And also, it needs to have, uh, 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 when we maintain this uh, transparency and you know uh, clarity within the team, you see the team retention in that company, in that ministry, will be for a longer time. Why? Because the team is driven with a purpose. They are not there for the sake of having a, a, a job or sake of being in a ministry. No, there is a purpose. When a member knows the purpose that he or she is there in the ministry, in the job that is assigned, it drives that individual to carry out the task with a passion, with an endurance, despite the challenge what that task could have. So minute, as a leader, you're enabling the person to recognize a purpose of he, uh, of him or her in the team and the task been given to them. And what are the personal benefit of them? It's going to be a win-win, okay? Individually, you've been benefiting by improving your skills and trying to achieve certain tasks by learning and performing. And overall, the ministry, the company has been benefited, people have been impacted. So if you see the bigger picture, the individual has been encouraged with a greater passion to drive himself, to run herself, despite the challenges that they would face in the process. So the, with that, we'll move on to the next step, that is the motivation. Motivation is very important. It can be in any sphere. We all know not every task at work will be very exciting or thrilling for everyone to be part of it. But everyone has a task that they need to look further. So that is one of the reasons why good communication was important. At the very first place, when we communicate the greater vision, the bigger picture, so it will motivate the team individually. As a leader, yes, you are encouraging the team members but then there's something that is within themselves to motivate and encourage them to know that, yes, I'm called to do this. There's a purpose within me. God has called me to serve him. There is a call, there is a purpose in each of us. When we realize the call and the purpose of God in our own life and that is related to the task that we are doing, you see, there is a self-motivation that is within an individual. Despite the difficulty, despite the challenges that one may face, in the ministry, in the workplace, in the task that they are doing, there won't be an attitude of giving up very easily. Each time when they face a challenge, I'm sure the individual and the team leader will look up to God saying, God, strengthen me, strengthen our team, strengthen each of us to do what we could do in a better way. And whenever there is a task that may not be very exciting or it may be challenging as a team, it is always good for us to come together and discuss. 
We need to reason out. We need to check what we could do to get a better result, how we could do this better. What are the important things needs to be corrected? How we can perform better? So when we discuss as a team and see who may be interested to take up the task, so what are we doing here? We are not assigning the task to any individual with a pressure, but then we are discussing, giving out ideas, uh, receiving ideas of everyone and applying the things that may be applicable and accepted by the team. And also giving a free will among the team members to check who can take up the task. So always when we give that free will among the team, you see there's a self-motivation. People, leaders always come forward to take up certain tasks. They step up. Though they may not have certain experience, they may be doing it for the very first time. But it is always good for a leader. If you feel that you are a leader, if you know that there is a leadership call upon your life, it is always good to step up, step out, and say that I would like to take up with some guidance of yours. I'm sure the, your manager will be there, your ministry leader will be there to help, support, guide, and back you up. By your just one step, you see you're stepping into a something new area with the help of God and the help of your team and your leader. And here you're going to explore a new task. This will definitely help you to develop a skill and achieve certain goals in your life where you will definitely be successful. If not so, you will learn lessons. So we should work, um, you know, out of any kind of certain emotions, but then we need to identify what is a call, what is a purpose, how we could do it better. When we step into a new sector, we are sharpening our skill or we are developing a new skill. We are adding talents, abilities, we are exploring our ability and strength that Sometimes we ourselves may not know that we are good at certain tasks. Only by putting our hands on to a task is when we will eventually learn that we were good at it. We have crossed it, we have overcome this, we have uh, led it successfully. Now, as we find that ability within us, you see, we have been self motivated. And this self-motivation will help us to perform better and take up several new tasks in our project, in our team. The next is patience. Patience. Do you think patience is very important for any manager? Why do you think patient should be one of the important skills that we need to develop within us? Team, you can unmute and share your views, please, so that we can keep the session interactive and not going on. And patience gives a chance to rethink, improve, get better, communicate. You know, patience can be a catalyst in making things better in every situation. Yes, thanks, Abhi. You're right. Very true. I think patience is very important. Somebody who is patient, you see, they achieve much more than what uh, an impatient person can do. So managing a ministry, a team, or a business, it's definitely not something very easy. Most often we feel like nothing is going right in the ministry or any sector that we may be in. While this might get frustrating, so it is more important for a leader to maintain patience. Although some may be, you know, born with this more patient within them, 
But for others, it is a skill that we need to develop eventually in time. When a difficult situation arises or we make some mistake, keep a level head. Control. We need to learn how to control our emotions and act very calm. So, because in general, we try to act immediately when things are not right. We try to act out of our emotion, out of our feeling. But then when we try to, uh, you know, later, because of this very act later, we may regret uh, the very act of our uh, the way we behave, the way we spoke, the way we handled, we may regret of it. But if you handle it with patience, if you have to take any kind of major decision because of a wrong action or because of some situation that will not right, when you handle it in a much calmer, patient way, you think, we think, ponder what could have been done better or how it can be done. So there would be some kind of solution that you may get to put it across to your team, to the staff, to the ministry uh, members that are there in your team. So how we can do it? Step out, take a deep breath, take a couple of seconds, even you respond. Or sometimes even if you have to take a few days, take it. But then answer in a very cool mindset so that you won't react in the way that would break the trust, damage the relationship, or you may have to repent regret later. So the ability to respond in a well manner, in an appropriate way, and not in a fueled emotion to another person may help us you know manage the relationship or um, even for the other person to work with us to serve with us in the ministry to give them the comfort to share their problem with us we are giving them an option when we handle things in patient we won't take the decision immediately but then we will discuss with the team, with the staff, with the individual, what happened, what actually happened. We will hear out their point of view and see what can be done and how this problem can be handled better. And also, as a leader, you will see how to bring comfort among the team members. So it is very important for a leader to be patient, patient with themselves, patient with others as well. So being patient is one of the key uh, skills that we need to develop. Fifth point is ability to give credit where credit is due. Very important. Most of the time, the leaders try to rob the credit of the staff members. This is something that we need to learn, to give the credit to this team, to the staff, to whom it is due. Because at some point during our ministry or our work, it's like that we will have been in the position where someone above us have taken credit for the task that we actually would have toiled and worked hard. So that would have frustrated each of us, isn't it? But under our leadership, we need to see to it that we need to give the credit to the person actually who shared that idea, actually who did the task. So as a leader, knowing when and how to attribute this credit gives praise to the right people is very important. It helps to build and motivate the team and makes the individual to trust the leader where they can share the ideas, they can improve. 
At times, it is also good. It is also good as a leader to motivate the individual. If, if in case you want to uh, uh, motivate a, a member in your team, even if it is your idea, but the team member has put in all the effort to bring that out. We can always give credit to your team member and say, wow, so and so individual, you brought it, you worked this task very well. We appreciate you. Because this is what Jesus thought. You know, after the death of Jesus, uh, uh, after the death of Jesus, it says in one of the gospel, I think it is in John, and it's also recorded in the Gospel of Luke. After the ascension, Jesus meets his disciples. Okay, so where the disciples have gone back to fishing, and they toiled whole night, they are unable to get any fish. You see, Jesus advises Peter, cast your neck on the right side. And when they cast it, they found they got a huge number of fishes and they catch in their cup. So what did Jesus tell the disciple? He says, get the fish that you have caught. He's not taking the credit for himself. But he's giving the credit to the disciples, what you have caught. So as a leader, he's showing us that you don't give the credit to another person. That's why you're the leader. So as a leader, we need to encourage, motivate, and give the credit to another person, not take it all to ourselves. It's my idea. I shared my idea. So instead of being that way, it's always good to give the credit to the team, even if it was your idea. So in that way, the team is motivated. The, uh, the person, the staff, has been personally encouraged. And you see how they can actually walk an extra mile to achieve the task that is assigned to them. Now, sixth is problem-solving skill. What would a ministry be if problems didn't ever arise? What would a business or a workplace be if problems didn't ever arise? Anyone from the team? So there's no problem in a ministry. There's no problem in your workplace. How is it? What would be your first thought, first question? Are we moving in the right direction is the question. Thanks, Avni. Anyone else? Are we actually doing something? Are we actually working? If we are working, if you are actually uh, uh, doing something, definitely there would be a problem. Definitely, you will come across certain things that you are fe you have been challenged with. So, problem solving is a key part for a manager, for a leader. So, whether it being able to schedule when your uh, staff are working or finding why uh, there is no turnover, why there is no impact in the ministry, why there is no growth in the area that we are serving here. There's always a problem that we need to look into to be solved. So a great leader, he works to identify and overcome the various problem even before they could become a big issue to do this so we need to uh, we need to understand we need to pay attention to the minute detail as well because something that is very small may be overlooked and ignored maybe the outcome of a bigger problem so we need to 
check the root cause of the problem and see how we can sort it out. As a leader, if you get that problem sorted, you see the progress, you see the growth, you see that your ministry is growing to be fruitful. With that, the seventh one is accountability. At the end of the day, we all are accountable to each other. You may be the head of the organization, still you are accountable. You may be the head of a ministry, you are accountable. We are accountable to God because every action of us has been watched by God, especially those of us in the ministry. A God is a God who sees us. There's nothing hidden. We may think that, you know, uh, you know no one's watching. You may think no one's watching, but then a God is a God who watches over things. He's concerned about everything. There was an act in Joshua chapter 7. We read about a person named Akar. The team was instructed by God after the battle, not to take certain things and keep it, but then leave it. But then what happened with that? Anyone who knows the story in the, uh, in the class, would you like to share what happened? Why was God upset with him? Anyone in the class? Akan was uh, the all the Israelites who were uh, fighting against Jericho. They were ordered not to touch anything from that place. That is the reason why God was upset with Akan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sister Vipul. Yeah, anyone else? Yes, Asha. Mm -hmm. I think because he was not in the right place where he's supposed to be and because he was not there. Actually, I think it's a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing. Yes, I don't think um, Aki was in the right place because um, if he was in the right place, they had known each other. But since he was, there was no one to account him, so I guess, my guess is that. He's... Okay, thank you. Thank you, Asha. Okay, so Akan, even after the instruction, he saw the gold, he saw the claw that was very pleasing and attractive, and he hid them in his tent. He thought Joshua and the other leaders are not watching. He did it in his private. But then God was watching. Akan disobeyed and took off the spoils, certain spoils for himself, and he hid. But God was watching him. And God, he, you know, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel at the very act of Akan. So we need to be sure enough that God is watching over us. Every area, the way we handle each member, the way we handle people in the church, the way we handle the whole ministry that has been assigned to us, the way we handle the money, the way we handle our time, Accountability for a ministry leader is very different from the people who are out in the world. We need to be, we need to be uh, accountable to God because we are accountable to God and God is watching over us. 
we need to make sure that everything that we do pleases God. Because God is watching over us. So good leaders hold themselves accountable when things go wrong. It may not be them, it may not be their mistake, but they are responsible for their team. So we see in the story that Joshua takes the responsibility and he goes and prays and asks God, and here things have been revealed. And then very act of Akan, he was punished for his very own act. In the same way, as a leader, we need to take accountability. We need to look at things. Even when a team member, you know, mess up, we need to see to it how it can be corrected and set things right. But, you know, the leader takes the accountability when things go wrong and take very little credit for themselves, but see to it that the credit is given to the team. And when both the staff and the leader are taking accountability for their own actions, the process that they run smoothly and work is completed with efficiency. So moreover, uh, moreover if the staff know that the manager is backing up, the leader is backing up, they don't want to let them down. They will try their best to achieve the task that they are assigned for or they are accountable for. With that, we will move on to the eighth one that is positive. So this is very important. As a leader, the attitude is contagious. So whatever attitude we carry is contagious. So why to carry a negative when they can carry a positive attitude. So as a leader, try to carry a positive attitude despite your situation and circumstances, knowing that your attitude is contagious. So if a leader has a positive attitude, this attitude will be contagious with the team members. So this positive attitude will change every member in the team because they would in fact carry the same attitude within them. So as a leader, we need to make sure that the team has a good attitude. Even if one member in the team, the attitude or the mannerism is not good, please call and check with that person individually, privately, to get that sorted. Because that will that one person's individual attitude will also impact the other people who are working alongside with them. So it is always good to get the attitude right from the leader to the team members. And as much as possible, we need to keep it fun, work through friendly competition. So they should not be a, a competition or a, they should not be com uh, they should not be having the attitude to compete with each other, but then we need to develop an attitude that they could compete with themselves, where they can develop as a person each day better than what they were before. So when they have this attitude of growing and developing themselves to be a better person, you see slowly as the individual grows, the ministry grows, the business grows, the workplace grows. You see each one striving hard with a positive attitude. So this needs to be impacted. And the ninth one is honest. So as, a, as we expect the staff to be honest, as a leader, we need to set that as an example. So we need to give them... Uh, uh, feedback that allows them to improve and grow. So the feedback when we give needs to be achievable, needs to be uh, something that is real, something that the person can change, something that the person can work hard to perform better. So the only way that the feedback can be, uh, can be given, the feedback should motivate a person 
should help the person grow, develop. So in that way, the honest feedback can be given to the individual and even the person will receive it in a positive manner because that will help him or her to grow and see themselves better in the ministry, the workplace that they are in. So this means that we are going to be truthful at both good times and at bad times. So when we are giving uh, feedback, we need to understand what happens when it is given. So we need to be mindful to give the feedback in a very uh, positive way. It should not be uh, in a critic. Uh, cr uh, it should not be in the manner of criticizing a person, which will break the person and demotivate the person. But then our feedback should only motivate, develop, and make the person grow to be a, uh, a better staff, to be a better ministry uh, leader in the ministry. So it is very important to be mindful of the other person and uh, give a honest feedback in a positive way. So with that, uh, we have completed the task uh, uh, on today on uh, people management. If there's anything that the team, uh, the class would like to share that could help each of us to develop this people management skill, I would keep this time open next five minutes for any of us to share on your learning or if there's anything that may be an important skill that one could develop that would help in their ministry, in their workplace, please go ahead. Ma'am, I just wanted to add a point. When we are talking about accountability at a leadership level, not only we are accountable to God, we are accountable to our own selves more than what other people think about it. In that place of uh, where God has placed us, we need to be accountable to our own selves. Without that, I don't think uh, we can do a, a pleasing job to God. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rupa, for sharing that. Very important. Accountability plays a key role in each of our ministry, in our workplace, any sector where, yes, as we are accountable to God, we need to be accountable to ourselves as well. Only when we are accountable, we can have a check over ourselves. Are we doing the right thing at the right time? Are we doing the things that have been expected from us? Thank you. Anyone else would like to add to any of the points that we shared today? Thank you, Asha, for sharing that on, you know, how you would like to develop a positive attitude and also to be there, uh, also to motivate others around you. Yes, important. Thank you. Anyone else would like to share? Okay, um, if we done, then we can end the session. We can close the session with a word of prayer. Um, yeah, okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you that who you are in us. Thank you that, Lord, you are developing the people management skill in us. But as you have raised each of us as a ministry leader, it's to do with the people. Lord, we pray that you will enlarge and develop the skills that is needed for each of us in the workplace, in the ministry area that we are assigned in, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will help us to develop all the mind skills that we study today, Lord, that we may be trustworthy, we may be accountable, that we may be patient, we may handle each of them lord knowing that we are accountable to you every task in every area father we thank you that you are with us you are leading us and guiding us thank you lord jesus that you are enabling us to develop new skills so that we can be a good leader in your kingdom thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen
Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for joining in today's session. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.